Hello, welcome to this video on natural grass. This is intended for people of year 10 or so, but anyone who finds it helpful is very useful. So, up to about 1830, all brass instruments were natural. So if we talk about brass instruments, we mean ones that are old. These things here, I have here a horn, these babies here are called valves. And they were not invented until surprisingly recently. They were invented in about 1820 or so, and they slowly creep their way in because composers are quite conservative. I'm using a horn here because horn is the instrument that is most used in the classical type. So in the Baroque time, Trumpets are the main brass instrument, and although they don't have these valves, they can play amazingly high, complicated stuff. Like if you listen to Brandenburg and Church No. 2 by Bach, you will hear some amazing trumpet playing. And the trumpet, without any valves, just with the player's lips, plays music that goes... Which is kind of amazing. And you'll notice when you hear that and listen to that piece, go and listen, pause this, listen to that piece now. Vandenberg Concerto number two by Johann Sebastian Bach. Pause, go and listen right now. Good, hope you enjoyed that. It's all high. It's all loud and it's kind of glorious. You'll notice it's also pretty major as well. And there are some really good physics reasons for that. You know how I like to bang on about physics. It is a fact of maths. It's a fact of the world, the notes you can get on a horn without any valves or a trumpet or a trombone or a piece of hosepipe. They're the same as the harmonics on a violin or a guitar. These are Pythagorean things. Okay, so how it works is any pipe or string is basically in a note. Now, because it took a long time to invent valves, brass players like to think in C major, which means that the fundamental, I hope you can see that just about, let's go down a bit, the fundamental is this bottom C, which most brass instruments can't actually play, but it's theoretically there. That's really important. But that tells us that this is for a pipe that is in C. So if I simply walk by that pipe and bang it with a hammer, the note C is what will come out. That's just a fact of physics. Now, what we'll notice, and I will play you some open notes so you can do some thinking. Here is my question. How far apart are, the, how many notes do you think I can play without using my lips. Remember, I'm not really a horn player. Take a guess. It's a number between one and 15. Have a guess, and then we'll see what I can do. And I want you to listen to how far apart the notes are and what is the pattern. Now, remember, I'm not very good at the horn, so be nice to me, okay? So this is for a normal horn in F. <laughs> Sorry. So beautiful, wasn't it? Not. So the note I couldn't get at all was that one. There, a really good horn player could get those notes, but I can't get it because I'm not a good horn player. And on things like trumpets, that note doesn't exist at all, although it's theoretically there. The next note I got was that C. Then the next note was a fifth higher, was that G. The next note was a fourth higher, it's C again. We're in C, so we're getting a lot of Cs. The next note, E. So we've gone. Octave, perfect fifth, perfect fourth, major third, minor third, then, and then we keep going up 
to about there. And a really good horn player can theoretically go up to the top C. These are also the notes that a classical trumpet would write. And I stress the word write. So you'll notice, by the way, can you see all those notes? Now you can. Whoa. The, the notes I've coloured in, the B flat and the F, are not in tune. Now, usually, of course, when we're out of tune, it's our fault, isn't it? But that's a fault of physics. So if I do that, if I say play from here, it's actually slightly flat because I've gone major third, minor third, slightly smaller than a minor third, slightly bigger than a second, a normal second, a normal second, slightly bigger than a semitone, and so on. So some of the notes are slightly out of tune. You can blame Pythagoras, the mathematician, for that. So. And that F I was just playing, it's almost an F sharp, isn't it? So think care, it's almost an F sharp. Now, the great thing about horns is, because it's curvy, I can shove my hand up it. And if I do that, so if I play an out of tune load, you'll notice that I can bend the pitch a bit. And that's one of the reasons a horn in the classical time is more useful than the trumpet. Because the trumpet is so long, you can't actually get your hand in. But with a horn, I can fill in some of the gaps now. So I could do... Now, it sounds pretty rubbish, doesn't it? And even a good horn player, you can only bend the notes a bit before it starts sounding like an angry wasp. And who wants that? So natural grass, we have limited notes, which depend on the length of the pipe. We always write them in C. That's the reason that trumpets and horns transpose. If you ever thought, why don't they just write the notes they get, like say, an oboe or a violin, that's why. Because horn players would only ever think in that key. If you're feeling really astute with your perfect pitch, I keep telling you this is a C, don't I? But that's a total lie. This is a horn in F. So, and that means that the, the horn is the length of F. So anytime I think I'm playing a C, I'm really playing an F. Because the horn player would have this bit here, this bit of pipe, which I can pull out and change. So now this is a horn in F. That's how long the pipe is. If I pull this pipe out, it's now a horn in E. You can maybe just about hear that. And horn players would have a whole box of pipes and they tip up and the piece would be in D major. So of course the composer would say horn in D. In which case, the horn player would pull out the piece of pipe that's this length and put in one a different length. And that's how it works. Um, you'll also notice... I have an arpeggio here. So the low notes are far apart. I'm a 5, 4, 3, 3, 2, 2, 2, 1, 1, and so on. I can only play tunes that are scales very high. So if I want to play this piece of Tchaikovsky, that's quite fine. But if I want to play that piece of Tchaikovsky down there, the D does not exist, and the best player in the world can't play it. It doesn't exist. So that's how natural brass work. They're the only instruments we can play. A horn is the most useful one because it can play more of these high notes. Trumpets, this is in Mozart, Haydn, Beethoven. They have the same bit notes, but only the treble clef ones. So the trumpet can play, doo -doo -doo -doo, and so on and so on. But they're really high, and they're quite loud, and they can't change key. 
classical music likes to change key, doesn't it? So our trumpets only can really play when we're at home. So if the piece is in D, our trumpet is in D, it is not possible for it to play any useful notes in, say, E flat major. Can't do it. Even when we modulate to the dominant. So say we're in C major, we modulate to the dominant. What note are we going to want most? We're going to want a G. Oh, well, I've got one of those. That's handy. I'm going to want a B to be in the G chord, aren't I? Oops, doesn't exist. I want a D. Yeah, I can get one of those. I want an F sharp. Not really. So we'll find that trumpets tend to play most in the tonic. That's kind of helpful, because if you're hearing loud trumpets in classical music and you're not sure what the key is, it's going to be in the tonic. Now, with the horn, because the horn has got more useful notes, it tends to play a bit more. But even so, they're pretty limited. Once Beethoven comes along, he starts realising that you can turn this around. If the horns can't play the tune I want, maybe I write the tune the horns want. Which is why Beethoven tunes, like this one, well, that tune happens to be that's Eroica, Third Symphony in E flat. In fact, I'm going to turn this into horn in E flat. Are you ready? This is now horn in E flat. And there's a bit where the horn plays this. And I'm not very good. And I can just about play the tune. There's even a big solo for all three horns going. And I can't play that because I'm not the first horn player. So that is natural brass. That's a really important idea. And all of this stuff that looks like C major, I simply pull out my piece of pipe and put in another one to change the key. Now, later on, some clever metallurgist realized that rather than having to pull out pieces of pipe, I can have the pieces of pipe attached permanently and simply make the air go that way or not with valves. And as soon as you have valves, you can, of course, fill in all these annoying gaps. So in horn music from about 1860, rather approximately, so Tchaikovsky, we can get, and Dvorak, we can play all the notes we like. And suddenly, think of this tune. Sorry. Suddenly the horns can be can get lots and lots of tunes, and then so can the trumpets. So the valves are these things here. Middle one makes it go down this bit of pipe, so it goes down a semitone. A slightly longer pipe, or in fact a pipe exactly twice as long, makes it go down a tone. And this curvy one makes it go down a tone and a half. And they can all be added up to each other. So look. <laughs> And that means I can fill in all the gaps all the way down to there. So suddenly I am fully chromatic. The piece can modulate wherever it wants and I can still play along. I can play any tune I can play. <laughs> no, I can't. Um... <laughs> Terrible, but I can play chromatic tunes. Let me just quickly show you. And there I was playing down about there. It sounds pretty rough. And let's be honest, that's what tubers were invented for. So, quick recap. And the Beethoven horn and the Beethoven trumpet can only play these notes, which are all essentially C major arpeggio 
or the C major scale if it's good and high. It's We always think of it as C, but we move it up and down by changing pieces of pipe in the instrument, literally pulling out changing pieces of pipe so that we can play in whatever key we like. You'll notice, of course, that they're not very good at being in minor keys because we don't have any natural, we don't have any flat, so we've got any natural. And Beethoven plays a neat trick of having two horns in C and two horns in E flat because then his horns at C are good at playing C's, E's, G's, and so on. His horns in E flat are good at playing E flat, G, B flat. So they fill in a C minor chord. So horn two plays the C, horn one plays the E flat because it's on a horn in E flat, and so on. Now that's quite a long video. I hope you kind of get it. So listen out. When you listen to Mozart or Beethoven, you'll notice horns do a lot of this. Because horns are good at holding low notes. Trumpets tend to sit out 100 bars, 200 bars, and then at the end they go... Only better in tune. So, I hope you enjoyed my natural brass video. Um, I'm not by any means a professional brass player or anything like that, but I hope you understood. So, quick final recap I can really only play notes in C, but I change what key I'm actually in by changing the pipe. That's why horns and trumpets transpose, because people are conservative. Even once I've invented valves, people still like to, people still like for them as though I hadn't in terms of transposition. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed this. Farewell.